we seen if uh, James Hardy has joined yet? I don't see him yet. We'll have uh, Brittany give that introduction. Okay. All right. You've started recording. Okay. All right, let's go. <laughs> All right, good evening, everybody, and welcome to your community engagement meeting to discuss the Reservoir Park Community Center facility. Uh, the City of Akron and the Akron Recreation Bureau reached out to the architectural community about back in August of 2020 and uh, to perform facility condition audits for three community centers. The, uh, this audit provides an evaluation of existing components, possible renovation options, and costs to bring the existing facilities up to today's needs. The goal of today's meeting is to gather ideas for the Reservoir Park community. These ideas will inspire how the building is best programmed and renovated to meet the needs of the community. Joining us today, over here, from the city and the Akron Acre Recreation and Parks is uh, James Hardy, Deputy Mayor of Integrated Development, uh, Development Engineering Manager, Michelle DeFiore, Recreation and Parks Manager, Brittany Schmeckel, and Patterson's, oh, not Patterson, oh my goodness, Reservoir <laughs> uh, Supervisor Greg Nyberg. From uh, the Prime AE group here, we've got Dana Mitchell, Senior Vice President of Architecture and Engineering, Robert Habel, Principal in Charge, Julia Duhart, me, uh, Project Manager, uh, Zachary Forney, Designer and Community Engagement Liaison, and also Marie Dowling, Principal of Banky Landscape Architecture. Uh, we would like to start today's meeting agenda with a project overview. Uh, if uh, James Hardy, if you're not on, then we're going to hand it off to Brittany Schmeckel to explain the city's vision for the community centers. Thank you, Julia. Is James on? Sorry. It doesn't look like it. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, well, thank you, Julia, and good evening, everybody. Uh, I am so happy to be here tonight to kick off our community engagement process with the Reservoir Park community. We are very excited about our partnership with Prime AE and to talk about our community center reinvestment program. The community centers should reflect the needs and interests of the neighborhood it serves. And over time, our community centers have not always received the level of care that they require and we are here to fix that. The goal of this program is to focus major investments into each of our community centers after we physically assess them and then talk with the community and receive feedback about what they would like to see. The city is committed to providing $2 million of investment for each community center throughout the program. The centers are community assets and it is our job to build what the community feels is most relevant to meet their needs. And that's what we wanna hear from you tonight. What are the needs of the community? What do you envision for Reservoir? The community center already has new life and programming thanks to the incredible leadership of Greg Nyberg. Greg is going to be involved throughout this process. He's going to help us engage with you along the way and this will not be the last time that you're gonna hear from us. Community engagement is the key to success to making Reservoir Park even better and stronger. We just want everyone to know we are very excited about this project and we look forward to hearing from everyone tonight. Great, thank you, Brittany. Uh, this evening, we're gonna provide a brief overview of how we approach building audits and what we've observed today at Reservoir Park. Then we want to spend the majority of the time openly discussing your ideas for Reservoir by asking you two questions. What do you want to see in a community center and what's missing from Reservoir Park Community Center? And we're gonna come back to this slide later in the meeting during the open forum. And then finally, we're also going to follow up with how your ideas highlight opportunities for program growth. But first, we need to do a little housekeeping here. Uh, for the Zoom meeting today, everybody will be muted as this uh, meeting is being recorded. Uh, and for you guys to communicate with us, the chat box will be open. 
So if you look at your uh, Zoom meeting, you should have either at the bottom of your screen a chat icon, or you may have to go to the more button, the three dots, and click on it and uh, select chat. Also during the open forum later in the meeting, we were going to allow you to raise your hand and, and speak with us. Uh, so how you do that is again, under participants or at your name, there may be a hand icon to raise your hand, or you may have to select the more button again and then select raise hand. And if you could do us a great favor, after you've spoken, could you take your raised hand down so we uh, don't call on you twice and we get to everybody else who needs to speak. Okay, and also we're gonna be asking some polling questions. And the first polling question today is, are you familiar with using Zoom? And take a couple seconds to answer that for us, please. All right, everybody's, uh, you know, COVID let us learn a lot of uh, virtual meeting platforms, didn't it? All right, great. I'm glad everybody's used to it. Uh, but if you, uh, if you could, go ahead and start talking to us through the chat while we're uh, sharing some information. And with that, I would like to introduce Rob Habel with Prime AE to uh, have an overview of our process. Rob? Rob, check to see if you're muted. I will try to use the technology to my advantage. Thanks, uh, thanks, Julia. Uh, it's it's really great. This is our third meeting, and all of them being uh, from Zoom, uh, we thought they may be difficult, but they've been very engaging, and uh, we we believe that this one will be uh, be as well. Um, this is an exciting one for me. I grew up one more. I grew up. I, my parents bought their first house one block west of Britain on Mohawk Avenue, and I went to kindergarten at uh, Cyberling. And I thought I had really arrived as a young boy when my mother allowed me to cross Britain Road to go play at Reservoir Park. And uh, so I've got fond memories going way back when when they opened the pool. In fact. And now it's uh, it's scheduled for being uh, renovated. So uh, have a long history uh, going back there. Uh, but what are we what are we doing today? Uh, is this community meeting? But we wanted to just briefly let you know what our program is with regard to what Prime AE is doing and how we are engaging with the city. And it's a three step process leading to design. Uh, it would be really remiss if we came to you at a community meeting with all sorts of designs and finished products and saying this is what we know you want because we don't know exactly what you want and your input is very is vital to to this exercise. But what we've been doing in our step one is we've been taking a look at the existing physical conditions of the building an assessment, if you will. And we're looking at the accessibility issues, modernization, uh, how does the site work, uh, especially with regard to the uh, planning that's going on with the pool as well, there's an integration there. Uh, so we're looking at what you have. And concurrently, we've been working with, uh, with the city and with your supervisor with regard to what's the program? What are the programs offered? What are the things that have been observed that uh, maybe uh, they would like to have here at Reservoir Park. Uh, what, what are some of the things that uh, work well in the building? What are some of the things that don't work well? And this building is primarily a historic building and it's adapted over many, many years uh, to what it currently is. And, and it certainly does, uh, as Brittany mentioned, needs a refresh, it needs to be updated. So. What we've done is we've gone that far and yeah we have some ideas of what we think might need to happen uh, but those are really bricks and mortar and square footage numbers that we're looking at right now and what we want from you is the vision and what we've been hearing in the last two meetings are not so much I need a room this big but we need a place where we can do x y and z we need a place where uh, these sorts of interactions can go on. It's been more personal than 
uh, physical. And that's really what uh, we've been hoping to hear. So this is your opportunity. Uh, Julia is gonna talk about the forum and about the chat and how we can use these as vehicles to, to gather your information. So thank you and I'll, I'll pass the baton back to Julia. Who is muted. You know, guys, you would think after two meetings, we would have this down. Oh, it went so well the first day. What's happened here? All right, <laughs> sorry. All right, so we're gonna move on to a few more polling questions. We wanna gauge uh, the demographic of tonight's meeting. So polling questions two, three, and four. All right, how often do you visit Reservoir Community Center? What age range best applies to you? And what are the types of programs you are interested in? And we'll take a couple minutes here to let you respond. All right, here we go. Well, it seems like the majority of the audience today had, uh, visits uh, Reservoir Community Center a few times per year. You know, we do have a, a good amount that comes a, a few times per month. Uh, our uh, most represented age range is 50 to 69, followed up by 30 to 49. And then it seems that, yeah, this has been the popular answer. Everybody it, uh, is interested in all three of the programs that we have listed here in the poll. Okay. But we want to emphasize that there will be a time to address the physical conditions and their budget impacts. But for this meeting, we want to focus on you know, function and give an overview of how we understood the site in the building during our observations. I'm gonna hand it over to Marie to uh, talk about the items that we described here in the blue box on the screen. Marie. Thanks, Julia. Good, good, good evening, everyone. Let's talk about the exterior of Reservoir Community Center. Some of our discussion this evening will be about what the design team observed, but our primary focus tonight is getting input from all of you. So how can we make the area around Reservoir Community Center feel more safe? This doesn't necessarily mean having to add lots of cameras or guards. Often safety is tied to strong views into and around a space or having a very active space full of people. We have heard this site is well used from day camps, the playgrounds, basketball, tennis, ball fields, the fire pit and, and the pool, but perhaps there are better connections between these activities to increase the overall activity of the park. Do you have um, suggestions on how we could improve the views or the parking lot from the parking lot or the main pedestrian walks around the park? What are other safety concerns that we are missing? As far as gathering areas, we understand the fire pit area has become very, very popular. But what are your thoughts on how, on how we can make it better on what has been already started? We also know a pool renovation is in the planning stages separate from this project, but we see a possible opportunity for an enhanced pool entry area to serve not only the pool, but the uh, community center and the ball fields. This could, this could become a picnic area or perhaps a shaded seating area with lots of raised planting beds and possible opportunities for local gardeners to enhance. What are other activities you'd like to see at Reservoir? So are there bike and pedestrian connections that we're missing from, from the neighborhood? Again, any of your thoughts would be very helpful. Last item is thoughts about enhancing the historical the historic character of this building. 
should should we soften the blue the blue walls to better relate to to the building on the next slide here are some photos showing some of our discussion points the main entrance the fire pit area the pool entry and with that thank you and i'll pass on to zach uh yeah thank you mary so looking down at that bottom left you can see that uh, the way to get into the pool down there. So I think it would be great to really maintain that and really show that that's one of the great assets of this site. Uh, and also looking at the, wow, that's some beautiful green space you have around there. Uh, just a lot of, there are great views to this. You know, do we want to maintain that historic look? Uh, personally, I appreciate that sort of thing, but you know, is that something that's very important to the community? Uh, and so when we start to look at the floor plan here, uh, we can see that this is, well, like Rob was saying earlier, it's an older building. Uh, back in the 30s, and there were some, you know, renovations done in the 90s, but, you know, it's time to get those bones up and running again. Uh, so we see the multi-purpose room was added on to the original structure of the office fireplace room activity room. But uh, let's turn it over to Greg so we can get a better idea of how that's used on a day-to-day -day basis by the people who come in to start to use that space. Uh, thanks, Zach. Um, as he was saying, it is an uh, older building, very old building, and um, you can see here on the screen that the main entry right there actually leads right into the office. And uh, that's actually a great space that we could use for programming, but it's kind of occupied by office space right now and the entryway and receiving space. Um, and then back where it's labeled activity room, that's one of our um, smaller activity rooms. We can also have smaller meetings in there. Um, during the day right now, we actually have kids from the neighborhood who come and they work on their virtual schooling. So we're able to break them up a little bit from the multi-purpose room. If they have a gym class, we can put them back in the activity room so they're not um, disturbing the other kids. And then we have our multi-purpose room, which right now, especially during uh, COVID has really been the catch-all for all of our programming. In the past, we could have had some of our smaller programming in the activity room or even in the office, but due to social distancing, we've had to really put everything over into the multi-purpose room there. So currently we have, um, classes a couple nights a week. We have some youth art classes that are taking place in the multi-purpose room. We have a um, ceramics pottery class for adults that takes place uh, every Saturday. And then we have fitness classes three nights a week that all take place in the multi-purpose room. Um, so at this point in time, like I was saying, especially with restrictions because of COVID, everything is kind of taking place in that multi-purpose room. And um, I just wanna thank everyone who is here tonight. And I really look forward to hearing everything that you have to say, the small and big things. I'm already kind of looking at the chat over here and taking some notes. I see the story walk. So Tanya, I'll definitely be in touch with you about that and make it and take it. So big and small ideas, I'm, I'm writing everything down so that some of the stuff that I can even get started on right now, I can start moving on. That's really exciting. Uh, I know one of the questions was talking about the fireplace room. Uh, if we could check out some of the pictures from the interior, um, you'll start to see a few of the spaces and how they're currently being used. Uh, well, currently being used on a day where we went where no one was there. Um, you know, but yeah, so looking at these spaces, we see the multi-purpose room and you know, it's, it's large, uh, but like Greg was saying, with COVID, everything has to be in there. So how can we better use these spaces? We have the activity room, that office, uh, that's kind of the entry right now. Um, which is nice walking in, being able to see Greg right away, but uh, you know, I'm not sure if that's the best way to have an office in there. Uh, so there's a lot of good things about this building, a lot of good uses um, that are currently happening in there. You know, sort of kudos to Greg for being able to use this space. Uh, what else could we start to use in this space? Which is what we've gone around asking people on the site. And uh, so we've gotten some feedback already from a few of the employees. You know, a space for esports, public computer stations, uh, looking at a teaching garden and greenhouse. Uh, for some nature programming, uh, you know, do we want a warming kitchen, a commercial kitchen? What sort of spaces do we want in this space, uh, in, in this facility here? Um, and, you know, are we using these rooms to their full potential currently? Uh, and if you've been to the space recently, you saw that we had this same poster posted up uh, to, you know, have your ideas, go ahead and jot stuff down. And uh, so hearing from the people in the community, we have seen this. Uh, so looking at the gymnastics, uh, help with homework, which I think is currently going on, um, you know, computer stations, <laughs> bottle flip, Fortnite. I like the I like the age range of these things. It's pretty good. A lot of good feedback from the community. You see that there are, uh, you know, young kids, uh, older adults. We see a little bit of everything. Yeah. So adult swim, um, you know, just for 
non-children, I suppose. Uh, yeah, so I like to see all of these, you know, all these different ideas. And I'm looking at the chat and I'm already seeing a lot of ideas. So uh, let's take this time to ask you all here on this meeting, you know, what do we want to see here at Reservoir Park? Uh, and, and what belongs in a community center? What belongs here in our community center at Reservoir Park? Uh, oh, wow, Zach, there we go. I wanted to take a moment to recognize Councilwoman Connor is with us. And, you know, Councilwoman Connor, if you'd like a chance to say hello to uh, the attendees at the meeting. Thank you. Um, welcome, everyone. It's so exciting to see this many people on. We look forward to all your ideas. Um, many of the committee members that helped uh, with the new playground are all here. Um, and we certainly have been enjoying that playground and zip line. So I hope all of our ideas come to fruition and money is not an object. So dream big. I believe. I'm sorry, I believe we also have Councilman McKittrick with us. I don't know if he would like to say anything. No, very interested in uh, hearing all the ideas here. I think everybody's had some great ideas um, and looking forward to uh, what we do with the community centers within our, uh, our city. Thank you. Thank you. It's uh, great to hear from our council people in here. Uh, but sort of going off of what we've been setting up here, I know there was some talk about the community garden and, uh, you know, getting that set up and, and the committee is here. Uh, so what else can we start to do? Let's, let's open up the floor to you all. Uh, feel free to raise your hand and we can, you know, call on you and meet yourself and uh, make this more of a conversation. We have anybody who wants to share their thoughts out loud? I've been feverishly typing here all your wonderful ideas from the chat. Please feel free to speak up. We won't bite. We can't bite you because we're virtual. So, <laughs> so please uh, share your thoughts with us. I also want to take the opportunity to mention that Councilman Fusco is with us as well. So I don't know if he has any thoughts that he'd like to start with. Hello, everyone. Thank you um, for uh, this meeting this evening here on a Friday night. Uh, certainly appreciate everyone's participation and look forward to hearing from everyone. I know Sharon Connor and I have had a lot of discussion about some ideas that we've been passing around back and forth. I've had a lot of discussion um, with not only Sharon, but also with the um, uh, service director as well. Um, as well as uh, there's, and, and I think we should all be aware that uh, the reservoir itself is going to be um, replaced someday. So I hope I'm okay saying that, Michelle, if, if I don't want to be out of bounds or anything, but um, the, the reservoir itself will be replaced uh, sometime in the future. We don't know exactly when, but uh, we've been discussing how that could look as well. And so um, maybe later on after we hear everything, Sharon and I could talk a little bit about some of those ideas. Um, but uh, thank you for hosting everyone and, and participating. So I guess yeah, let's go ahead, I'm sorry. I was gonna say, I see uh, Jen Emanuel with his uh, hand raised. Yeah. So um, I, I guess I'd, I'd just like to start by uh, saying thank you and lowering my hand. Um, you know, I, I appreciate everybody getting together and, and actually asking, right? Um, I think a lot of the stuff that, I mean, I, it, I'm trying to pay attention to like to the chat and to listen and to talk, but I think a lot of the stuff I've seen come across the chat is, is, is precisely it. Anything that's going to kind of build community and get people from here to, to get over to the park. Um, and I, I think a lot of the stuff that I've talked to Sharon uh, about in the past, you know, um, building on that fire pit area, you know, just having a community area where people can come in and um, maybe just have different different uh, fairs or uh, festivals or craft shows or, you know, that kind of thing where um, maybe some of the entrepreneurs and, and, and people from the community can actually come and, and showcase stuff. And maybe even a, a component of that could be like, some of the younger uh, people, you know, might be maybe a, a kid's craft show or something. Um, and then I, I, part of my question was actually the, for the, uh, the actual reservoir. Um, you know, I think that could be a, a I'm sure we, if we do talk about it later, 
like more green space. I mean, it's just such a large space there. And I know there's a lot of um, sports areas, but you know, I don't know if there's any possibilities of, of planting like, like trees or more, more green stuff. Um, so, um, cause it would be awesome to have that green space. And then, you know, we're, we're right in the middle between the Metro park too. So um, that's it. I'll just keep talking for like half an hour if you let me go though. So I agree with all the chat. Thank you, everybody. Yeah, thank you. Uh, it's good to hear, you know, people who have, you know, an idea of what's going on in the space and also being able to apply some of what's happening other places to this. Um, so the green space idea, I, personally, I think some more green space should take place there as well. There are those, uh, those blue um, planters that are there currently. I think if those were to be expanded or something a bit smaller, not so, you know, chunky, um, it would make a lot more space for green. And I think that'd be, that'd be perfect. Especially just looking at a few of those pictures from earlier. Um, so some beautiful shots that just had like greenery, but more. Maybe stepping stones in the, in the big blue planter areas would be beneficial too, to divide it up if you did a community garden. Okay. I see uh, John Ashley with his hand raised. Yeah, hey, um, so just like an immediate safety thing, um, I think just if there was like a, a clear, uh, like, uh, I don't know, like a crosswalk or something on like several sides of the park. Um, you know, I think cars just sometimes go whipping down either hillside or uh, Britain. And so even just like, it's a really walkable park, but I think sometimes you have to sort of skip around to get across there. Um, I think like just some future things, you know, I, I see lots of people talking about like an outdoor, uh, like venue, concert space, electrical, like something like that, where it's such a, a central location, uh, to be able to have something like that to host things in the summer. Uh, and then I think the other thing too is, is an, an indoor sports kind of space. Uh, you know, if we were really like dreaming, uh, I think, you know, in the summer, those basketball courts are packed all the time, but like once it gets cold, uh, you know, the, even the multi-purpose space there, you can't, you know, the basketball and the other sports that are going on, there's really no place to do that in the neighborhood. So something like that would be, would be great. Ladarius Steele also has uh, a hand raised. Yes. Good evening, everybody. Can you hear me well? Yes. Okay. So um, I absolutely agree. I'm coming from NOAA Sports, so I absolutely agree with my guy, John Nashley, in the indoor sports space. Um, I do think the indoor space should be a priority, um, you know, providing year-round programming. I think Greg and the team have done a great job of bringing programming to the space, so getting them uh, – a modern space, whether they're expanding that indoor multi-purpose room and I'm kind of conjoining it with their current office and relocating the office, that would be good. And even kind of breaking down some walls between that kitchen space would help, you know, expand and accommodate more community members, at least once this COVID thing is over. Um, and another thing, I think signage is a big thing. So with the main entrance being on Hillside, um, having some type of signage on the two corners, the two intersections on the end of Hillside definitely will help, you know, bring attention to the park so people who aren't from the community will know what this space is. It's not just an empty football field on one side or just a baseball field from the other side looking in. And um, also, I would say some type of um, connection. I'm not sure the details of it, but connection from the Britain parking space into the main building. So um, many people may intentionally want to enter from that Britain side of the park. And uh, we have a small parking space there, just being able to provide, I know we have the pathway, but whether it be signage, similar to the signage that we have in the park and in the parking lot right now, but just putting that along the perimeter of the park, I think that can definitely help people um, kind of get a better understanding of what the space is. And then one more thing I had, um, I was thinking um, more so revenue generating for the park is having some of the outdoor shelter spaces. So families may want to have a um, picnic, um, similar to the Metro parks do, but um, using some of the green space for a larger shelter space for, you know, multiple um, tables to go under, electrical to go under, and if somebody want to have outdoor party for their family, you know, they're able to rent that out and you can make some money for the reservoir. And an indoor sports space again, if you guys 
didn't get that one. <laughs> yep, got it up here in the upper uh, left, right hand corner. When you say indoor sports, what what kind of uh, things are you envisioning? So I would definitely say um, a space. So that's a um, issue that we kind of face this winter. So we've actually utilized. Um, a classroom space across the street at Wingfoot and was able to repurpose it just for some indoor small group uh, fitness classes. But I think, you know, with students already being at the community center uh, for after school, and whatnot, having a large enough space, I would say larger than the current uh, multi purpose room, just something where we could bring things in and out. So, not necessarily a full on turf field. I would love it, but um, just space for us to bring in different fitness classes, whether it's yoga, um, just kind of some running around, going in there, different things for the kids. With the, uh, with Cyberlink so close uh, in, in the gym and the, the idea of a community learning center when those were uh, rebuilt, uh, basketball and some of the spaces that uh, of that size are, are, are those being utilized by the community? Uh, or could they be better utilized just in terms of uh, not trying to copy a space that's so close uh, across the street? Any thoughts to that? I will hop in and say they probably could be better utilized. A lot of it does come down to the scheduling with the school as well. So um, anything that they have, from my understanding, does take precedent but and there's I, definitely oh. the availability there to utilize the space better. A lot of times those are taken up by leagues. And so they're booked every night for, you know, six, eight weeks at a time. So although they're used by the community, they're not necessarily used by the residents here because they're booked up for, you know, eight weeks of volleyball, eight weeks of basketball at a time. Okay, thanks. So what else do we have so far? We've got, we've got quite a bit of really great ideas here. Uh, sounds like we will put some focus around the existing walking trails, uh, clear about the signage that's been mentioned a few times, uh, install a story walk. That's, uh, I've seen those before. They're, those, are, uh, those are a lot of fun to be honest. And then uh, let's see here. So things like bathroom renovations, uh, like Rob talked about earlier, is you know there's physical conditions that these buildings absolutely need um, from an accessibility standpoint, from a life safety and welfare standpoint, just to meet current building codes. So things like the bathrooms that will are on the docket to be uh, re uh, renovated. And then, and, you know, other items like, you know, door hardware and things like that, you know, it's just, you know, a lot of just physical items that we are, we will uh, address in the assessment. But, uh, these uh, big picture program ideas and just figuring out the space for these uh, wonderful ideas. I think that's what we really want to uh, focus on today. So we can go back and take a look and see what we can do with the site we have and, and with the building we have and, and with the budget that we have. And I liked the, um, there was a comment here about camp, uh, community campaign fundraising. It, it would be great to hear from the local community, you know, uh, groups that they've successfully campaigned with before. Uh, that would be a wonderful thing to find out. And then, you know, then maybe uh, people can reach out to those, you know, those uh, opportunities. And then, you know, there is the opportunities here for additional fundraising from outside sources where nobody's turning down money here. <laughs> so let's, uh, please let Greg, let the city know, let Sharon know uh where those opportunities may lie hey julia this is dana um greg this might be a question for you or it might be a question for the broader audience here but there was a very good question last night in our community meeting last night and the question is this um is there programming that you're turning away or are there programs that you just can't accommodate because the space 
physically doesn't doesn't permit you to. And you know, maybe it's a question to you or anybody else that may want to chime in on that. So I will say, um, at least on my end, I have not turned away any. I have turned away rentals. I will say that because our space just is not large enough for a lot of what people would like to accommodate. Um, and as far as I do think the space is limiting where I cannot get um, any organizations to come in, it's very hard to have um, outside organizations come in and have meetings or things of that nature in there just because there's you know, the two smaller rooms and then the one multi-purpose room that is scheduled pretty fully at this point in time. See, uh, Jim Emmanuel has his hand up again. Yeah, it's something just kind of occurred to me as as we're we're all here together on this Zoom call, and I think you mentioned at the beginning that you know you you had pretty good turnout with that. I'm sure all of us are aware how much more effective we've all been being able to utilize this technology and and just how much more we've been able to accomplish. And I I feel like having some of the programming like. Um, even some of the indoor sports, um, like Ladarius mentioned, the the yoga, right? But what if we could we could have uh, capabilities to do like higher quality, like cameras and stuff, so people could do the Zoom Zoom calls, and you could do programming that is is virtual and live. Because I imagine there's a, there's a huge part of the population that maybe they're just not comfortable getting out of the house, not even pre COVID. You know what I mean? Like like they're just they're homebodies and they're stuck in the house, but they could take advantage of, of programming and things that are happening. You know, some of the cooking classes people had talked about, uh, I think in the chat and, you know, just, just any of it could be, there could be a component that could be virtual and uh, live. And I think uh, a lot more people could take advantage of it. That's it. I've actually seen that in some of the other communities around the state that they're offering, you know, virtual cooking classes and, you know, a lot of virtual opportunities that way. So I think that's a great point. All right. Well, we have plenty more time for some more open discussions here uh, in regards to programming and how you feel the space is currently being used. Uh, does anybody want to maybe elaborate more on the existing programs? I know I heard pottery was very popular. Um, and Greg, when those programs like pottery, I'm assuming, you know, you've got wheels and everything like that, those take some space. Uh, are you currently having enough adequate space for programs like that? So right now we're just doing um, hand building because we don't hand have building. wheels. Um, but I will say I was very excited. Um, our art instructor and I kind of sat down and came up with ideas that we could do. And the ceramics and pottery class was one that she really wanted to do and we put it together and it filled up almost instantly. So it did really show me that there was a want for classes like that in the neighborhood. So now we're just looking to expand it, but space space is always an issue at that center. Like I said, trying to fit everything into one room, it makes it hard to schedule multiple programs at once. And um, even in pre-COVID times, that, that multi-purpose room is packed with uh, 30 people in there. So space is always an issue in that building. And another item I, you know, we've noticed when we walk through is, you know, your your main corridor has, you know, school supplies, library books, things like that. Um, it, and I'm assuming that's mostly meant for your after school programs. And it seems like the facility could, you know, benefit from, you know, maybe more of a dedicated classroom area for the after school programs where those types of items can be you know stored you know instead of blocking major circulation uh, throughout the building let's see here councilman yeah, fusco i see you've got your hand raised yes thank you i, I saw that sharon i'd like for sharon to go before me if she i saw, saw her hand up as well so she could please uh go before me sharon well, I was just going to say one of the other problems with having such little space, not only are those rooms scheduled back to back, that doesn't give you any time for setup. So you're coming in ready for a six o'clock meeting and the 530 people haven't left yet. And it's just a constant um, rush all the time. It's very hard to, to, to work within that. Although I want to be careful when we talk about um, expanding the building 
Um, one of the things we're big on is history and keeping the integrity and history of that building. Um, it's of great historic value to the neighborhood. Um, and um, we are very prideful of our history in the Heights. Thank you. Uh, I was going to mention um, what's happened is, is that a few years ago before Sharon was on city council, uh, Sharon, were you done? Are you okay? Okay. Uh, a few years ago before Sharon was on, I was asked to participate with Mac Love and all the work that he had done uh, or was going to do at the time in reference to Reservoir itself, uh, you know, an art project. What we had done was we had brought together, they came to me and uh, we had brought together uh, folks from our Water Utilities Bureau, actually three generations of managers. And that's why whenever you walk around there, you'll see a lot to do with water um, and, and water distribution. Uh, that's what, whenever I think of reservoir, and I was raised in the Heights. Um, I know uh, Rob and I, uh, I think we went to school together for a few years there. Um, probably played basketball over at the park together. But um, I, I often think about water. And I think what we could possibly do, consider, I mean, and I wanted to wait for everyone else to speak first um, and to hear what everyone else's ideas were. Uh, but I, I honestly believe we could possibly uh, make Reservoir Park a destination, utilize it as a park, absolutely continue the good work that Greg has been doing there and Sharon Connor and the group um, continue that. But I think we can also make it a destination and educate the community. I saw someone come up with the idea of an of a education walk or what have you. That's exactly what we were talking about was, was Possibly what we could, because in a few years down the road, what's going to happen is, is we're going to, um, the reservoir itself needs to be replaced, okay? And it has to be elevated, okay? Uh, just due to the water distribution, it's a long story, but um, it has to be elevated. So in all likeliness, it's going to be a tank, okay? Um, and my thought was, it's going to be a tank, it's going to be elevated, obviously, metal, concrete, what have you. But I believe what we could possibly do is around the tank itself is, is to put panels up, educating the community in terms of reservoir, in terms of the history, in terms of getting water from where it, it comes from, way up north, and bringing it to the reservoir itself, and then the distribution piece. There's so many assets there. The, 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 the brick building on the corner, I think it's Ottawa and Britain Road right there. I, don't, I think it's been decommissioned. Open that up, provide access to students, to, to teachers to take their students there and to teach them about water distribution, about, um, about our CSOs um, and, and, and about how we handle water, et cetera. Um, the uh, education walk, we could put panels along those walkways about how water gets to your tap and what we do with it after we use it. Um, I think this would be an awesome opportunity. Uh, we've even talked about uplighting those panels, possibly, again, with the education piece. Um, you know, have an app, perhaps, whereas, you know, you could, again, tell the history as well as, you know, how water um, gets distributed throughout the city of Akron and some of the history as well. So uh, that's been some of the things we've been talking about um, in terms of uh, the reservoir itself, possibly down the road, but uh, again, that's gonna cost quite a bit. I, uh, from what I understand, there's quite a bit of um, uh, water distribution, uh, I don't know a proper word, but paraphernalia, if you will, uh, from back in the day, a lot of maps, a lot of gigantic, you know, uh, um, levers and so on and so forth. Uh, we even talked about the possibility of having like a little, you know, museum type of thing there as well. But um, these are some of the things we've been talking about and um, as well as possibly, and this, this is another kind of stretch objective, but in terms of the, the reservoir itself or the waters that tank, possibly um, having a uh, spiral staircase going to the very top because as we all know, the views from up there uh, will be quite striking. Um, and so uh, 
that's some of the things we've been, Sharon and I have talked to the uh, water distribution, to Jeff Bernowski. Um, we've talked to Chris Luttle um, and in the mayor's office about these ideas and concepts, but um, would love to hear from this group here and see, see what their thoughts are on this and if this could possibly fold in or at least be considered in terms of, uh, oh, and another idea that Sharon had actually was taking that water tank the water tank that's been decommissioned, taking it down, and then possibly opening that up is a, is a place for education as well. So um, that's just some of the thoughts that we've had over the last uh, couple of years. Thank you. So where are those items currently being archived at? I, I don't know. You have to ask <laughs> Jeff Bronowski because <laughs> that's who <laughs> That's actually, it was a pretty cool meeting because we had, like I said, three generations. We had Dave Crandall, uh, Mike McGlinchey, uh, as well as uh, Jeff Bernowski. And all, all three uh, were at, you know, over our utilities bureau and uh, it was kind of neat getting them all together. And if you look at that art up there that Mac Love um, you know, uh, put together, that's, that tells some of the story. And I think there's a lot of story to tell. And I think it could be a destination. I, 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 can, I can see people from all over coming there and learning about water and water distribution. That's one of our greatest assets is water here in the city of Akron. And I think it should be celebrated. It is amazing how many people have no idea that there's water in there. They just think it's called Reservoir Park because a long time ago there used to be water. They have no idea that the water's there, nor how it got there, nor where it's going next. Um, so the education is really important. I will say until I worked there, I thought that that was just a, a thing that was a remnant of the past, not that it was still operational. Well, because it's uh, it's one of the highest spots in the city, if not, I've been told that George, George Long Park across the street is the highest point in the city of Akron. And so it must be just a little bit higher than Reservoir Park but it's right across the street. It's the hidden park that many of you don't know about, but uh, it's a pretty cool place too. But anyway, um, that was, you know, why it was put there because the gravity sends all that water comes from Lake Rockwell and then it sends it down, down below. So, uh, and I'm sure a lot of people don't have any clue about that, but I uh, strongly support the idea of some type of an observation deck. I don't know how much, you know, how expensive those, you know, like the fire observation decks that uh, you see in like some of the national parks that are all, you know, those things are pretty cool, but it's amazing the uh, view you can see. Um, uh, folks that work at Cyberlink can attest to that from high up in the building, how far you can see. And uh, in, the, in the winter when the trees are clear, if nobody's ever looked, go to the top of Britain Road Hill, pointing west, and look, and you can see Infocision Stadium, the university. Um, I, I remember when the Pfluger factory burned down. You could see from up there, you could see this holocaust of flame from way up on the hill. So it would be a wonderful commanding view um, and make that even more of a destination place. Mike, I, absolutely. I, I know it's, and I mentioned it's kind of a stretch objective because, uh, you know, our lawyers, our law department will have to weigh in because obviously we want to make sure that that would be secure. And, you know, and, and I know that piece of the whole puzzle is not necessarily what we're all about here today, but it kind of is. And so I think, you know, kind of pitching the, and, and the administration, there's a lot of work that still needs done on even seeing if that could happen. But um, uh, I, I, I like the idea about the panels at minimum and having those on the sides of, of the tanks, uh, uplighting them. I think that would really be cool. And, and also having that the education piece, um, you know, uh, uh, educating uh, not only residents, but, but the young ones in terms of uh, engineering, Michelle, things like that, uh, you know, uh, how water gets uh, distributed. Well, these are all wonderful ideas, uh, you know, for around the uh, community center. 
you know, and it, and I love the idea of making it a future space or having an educational walk or, you know, area of some sort. I bet Marie is just chomping at the bit right now because this is her bread and butter. <laughs> but it, it, these are great ideas. And, you know, it brings the opportunity to have, you know, school field trips come here, not only from the local schools, maybe from other schools, you know, uh, in Northeastern Ohio. That's all wonderful. Uh, I, I hear a lot of talk about nature programs and education, and I'm not hearing as much about uh, like clubs and uh, maybe more like uh, crime prevention or, 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 you know, job training, things like that. Are, are those items that the reservoir community feels is taken care of pretty well right now with current programming? or just doesn't see a need for it or can, or, or those uh, possibilities available, you know, somewhere else within that community. Uh, would somebody like to speak up on that? Well, Greg really works really hard on providing a lot of programs and uh, yeah, I, pretty much he's so receptive if somebody says something to him you know we should try this of course the pandemic has put a yeah kibosh on a lot of that but uh, he, you know he's he's always uh, ready and thinking and i think uh, you know we've got a very uh, receptive ear to people making suggestions but like sharon said earlier the scheduling problems are you know when we think about right. the size of you know, like just Firestone Park, think of their building, the big, big room splits in half. Mm -hmm. And then they have another smaller room on the other side that's for smaller meetings, but their big, big room splits, uh, splits in half. I've been a member of the Firestone Park Garden Club, but I'm gonna be leaving that now that we're starting a Goodyear Heights Club again. But um, we've always met there. And on one side, we have the Garden Club on the other side, is AA that's you know always there yeah. so um but that's a big room that they can pull that wall so um and the other thing I noticed about like that building is they have that dedicated craft room that has all kinds of craft supplies the quilting club all of that you know and we don't have any kind of space that could do something like if we establish regular groups like that I mean there's sewing machines in there and fabric mm -hmm. and you know things like that if we had a dedicated craft room like that that would be really cool so do you feel that the program here uh greg maybe you're the best one to answer this is ever changing it it fluctuates quite a bit throughout the year um or is there a pretty uh standard set of programs that are consistent throughout the year so we have our um kind of staple programs we have our after school program that happens all year round and sorry, my dog wanted to give her little two cents too. Um, so we have our after school program that happens during the whole school year. We have summer camp during the summer. And then we also have um, a group of um, seniors that meet and they play cards. We haven't been able to have them in the building since COVID started, especially with the kids doing their schoolwork there during the day, but hoping to get them back and involved again with the kids returning to school. So. We have the the programs that happen the staple ones and then like the art programs the ones that we're just starting to kind of dabble with mm -hmm. those are all kind of ever changing just to see which ones people really do want what kind of sticks and it'd be nice to have a space where you can you know like he, i think uh, the gentleman before he was saying you know to have a space that is multifunctional when it comes to art so uh, actually, we should probably write that down here. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, was, I cut somebody off. Go ahead. I see Willa Keith's hands up, hand is up. You're muted, you're muted, Willa. There you go, I found me. Hi, everybody. Um, for those who don't know me, my background is mostly, I work Girl Scouting and, and I love teenagers, so. Uh, um, I would love to see some team programming, but I think everyone's pretty much saying it's the same thing. Um, we utilize the Goodyear Library a lot, um, great resources, but it would have been great to be able to use Reservoir Park for Girl Scout meetings and also for teen 
um, youth leadership meetings, but the space is just too small. So just, just want to keep that in mind. And maybe um, a way to incorporate a larger room because of the historical piece that we have with the building and not expanding it, incorporating that into the um, new design or renovation of the pool within the pool. That's all. And I see uh, Tim McQuaid has his hand raised and he just stepped away for a minute. I hear he's back. Um, I currently have a toddler who needs to go to the bathroom. So unfortunately I'm gonna to have to pass on it for now and maybe come back if there's a possibility. Actually, no, you good now? No, I'm she not. Okay, I will try to come. Yeah, if we need to extend the meeting for five minutes, we'll, we'll be happy to wait. Sharon, I see your hand is raised. Dave. You're Can muted. You mute. We've had so little adult programming um, prior to Greg coming that it's hard to really see where our niche is going to be. Mm -hmm. You know, we've had lots of calls for the children's cooking classes have been going great, um, and some of the other programs going well, but we've had so little that it's hard to know where that focus is gonna end up being. I love the idea of some teen programming. Uh, I think our teens and our young people need to have that ownership mentality of the park because that helps everybody all around. And the best way to do that is have them engaged there. Um, but the programming has been great. I just think that there's so much more we can have and then we'll have a better view of what, what's good, what, what fits and what doesn't fit. Um, as far as crime prevention, one of the things we've always worked around, or at least through some of the neighborhood groups is, if everybody gets together and knows each other, you, you don't need a lot of crime watch. We all know each other. On this call, I would say most all of us know each other because we've been involved with each other for a while. And, and I think that philosophy will continue to spread as the park becomes a community gathering space. Is there anybody? Will, I saw that you had your hand raised and uh, it's taken down. You're okay? All right. Well, while we're waiting uh, for the gentleman who wanted to speak, uh, Tim, <laughs> uh, why don't I go ahead and talk to you guys about ways to uh, you know, continue to reach out to us while we're uh, working on the assessments and the programming uh, portion of this project. You know, we've got the flyers that are available to you at the community centers. Uh, we also have the survey link that you see on the screen. Please, uh, we know Reservoir, actually, we've been getting quite a few participants at Reservoir on the survey, and we greatly thank you for that. But Hey, we could always use more. So please uh, keep spreading that word on the survey. Uh, also information is available at the Akron Rec Desk and also the Facebook website, excuse me. <coughs> and Greg, you know, he friendly individual that he is, uh, you know, was always available by phone and email. And if you have any questions and you wanna have, you know, one-on-one -on -one discussions because you feel more uh, comfortable with Greg, please do so. Uh, we're, this is not the last time you guys are going to hear from us, and the, we want to make sure that you guys feel uh, good about the, uh, how we are taking your input and applying it to the, the building and to the programming, so please keep the ideas coming, and um, like I said, you have all these assets available to you, and it looks like Tim's back. <laughs> Tim, you want to go ahead and go? Yeah, thank you. Um, I was fortunate that my wife came home and saved the day on that end, but uh, we've been going through some potty training and uh, she was letting me know that she had to go. So I'm both happy that she did that, but you know, of course it was perfect timing uh, when the hand was raised. So um, I just wanted to bring up, um, I work at a school myself and we've been looking at campus uh, plans too, but just the importance as we go about things is making sure they all kind of tie together and mesh together. Um, we've really put a lot of emphasis on campus unification. Just note that, you know, those things that blend in all throughout the park. Um, 
I mean, one thing that comes to mind is we have such a rich building with stonework that, you know, one way to incorporate that is to also put it in the ball fields, um, you know, use that as a backstop on a lot of those metal um, equipment that we have now that could really bring a lot of life and, you know, make it a, a, a you know, source of pride too. Um, Cause I really like to see like the sports revitalized as well. Uh, in addition to all that we've been talking about educational pieces. Um, just to make, you know, really utilize all the space that we have and um, and continue to improve the spaces that we do have. And I do think like the large area is something that is a must. I mean, with the weather that we combat, um, I think having a, a larger kind of great meeting room that could still blend into uh, with the existing building could do really well as well too. Good job. <laughs> Well, thank, thank you. you. That, that's a wonderful thought there is, you know, having a consistent language of materials so everything mm -hmm. ties together. That, that's a very good point to make. And then I also see here an investigation of some solar panel systems and green energy. You know, uh, coming, myself coming from a very green background, those are definitely, you know, ideas that will... Uh, you know, assist in the long run, especially, but they do take a good amount of funding to get them started. But like we said, no idea is bad, a bad idea. We want those pie in the sky ideas. And, you know, if there's a way to rainwater collect or anything like that, especially with all the great ideas about having a community garden and trying to avoid, you know, built-in irrigation, those are great ideas and we love to hear them. Yeah. And, uh, with that, a wind turbine. You know what? There's a lot of uh, companies out there that will put a wind turbine in any place that you ask them to. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, those are things that we can obviously look into in the future um, or during this uh, this time frame where we're looking at the building. Uh, just wanted to. It is a little bit after seven o'clock. Don't want to take up the rest of your Friday evening. I did my best to type all your wonderful ideas. We are going to, uh, rec we're recording right now. We're going to print the chat. We will come back and we will fill this board out and not overlap all the uh, wonderful ideas. And this will be shared on the websites. Uh, so you guys can continue to see all these great ideas and keep bringing the new ones in. It, it, we're happy to hear them. Uh, so with that, uh, if anybody, nobody else has any uh, anything else tonight, Thank you so much for your participation. Have a great evening. Have a great weekend. And real quick, I just want to um, emphasize, if you guys have any thoughts, if there's anything you think of, feel free. Please call me at the center. Send me an email. Um, I am extremely open to any programming ideas. I've taken notes this whole time about the chats, what you guys want to see, and I will give anything a try and let's see if it works. So if there's anything you want to see there, please give me a call. Send me an email and let's see if we can make it happen. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, everyone. Great seeing you all. All right, thank you, everyone. Yeah. Bye.